The New York Times uses the 4th of July to bash America. Patriotism takes a big hit in new polling. Plus, cocaine is discovered at Joe Biden's White House. All that and more. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. God bless the United States of America. Okay, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday. I hope you're having a great week. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with the New York Times and left-wing attacks on America, especially as we just celebrated Independence Day. Now, I just love the 4th of July. It's awesome. But when you are talking about an event or an occasion that is supposed to bring people together as Americans, you can bet that those on the left will be ready to tear everything down. Keep in mind that Marxism cannot succeed as long as America as we know it exists. That's why the notion, the idea of America is always under attack by the left. As we neared our national birthday, WNBA player Natasha Cloud took to Twitter to bash America. She was triggered this particular time by the Supreme Court's affirmative action ruling regarding colleges and universities, but her comments were directed at America in general. Natasha Cloud tweeted out, our country is trash in so many ways, and instead of using our resources to make it better, we continue to oppress marginalized groups that we have targeted since the beginning of time. That's just one example. All you have to do is scan her Twitter feed to see comment after comment after comment about how terrible America is. It's hateful. It's racist. On and on and on. In one tweet, Cloud wrote that people hate her because she is black, gay, and a woman. The fact of the matter is that I certainly don't hate Natasha Cloud because I had no idea who she even is. I never heard of her before. Now that I have, what I see is just another entitled Gen Z leftist baby who complains about everything and bashes the very country that has provided so much opportunity. Now, NBA player Ines Freedom was quick to call out Cloud's tweet and give her a dose of reality. And as Freedom was quick to respond, saying, just ask your colleague Brittany Griner how trash America is. Let me know when your season is over. I'll buy your ticket and we can go together to countries like China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, Venezuela, Cuba and Turkey. People have no idea how lucky and blessed they are to be in a country like America. I'm not saying America is perfect, but trust me, you don't want to see the other side. Great comments. And as frustrating as it is to hear all these leftists bashing America, the one thing we have to keep in mind is that this is and has been the plan for decades by the left. The Marxist takeover of education is designed specifically to bring down America and push revolution and chaos instead of patriotism and community. Natasha Cloud is the perfect example of the Marxist indoctrination process. And she, of course, is not the only one bashing America. Just in time for the 4th of July, The New York Times put out a story saying that the holiday is now controversial and some Americans are uneasy about celebrating it. A new headline from the New York Times, of course, don't you know, reads, no sparklers for these folks, quote, whether because of crowds, politics or a loss of patriotism, some Americans are conflicted about celebrating the 4th of July. The Times outlines a New York woman's political qualms with celebrating the holiday. She told the outlet, quote, Last summer, Roe versus Wade was overturned, and that really made me less inclined to celebrate. The article goes on to say that even if she wanted to celebrate, she would worry about the message it sent. Oh, brother. The Times also cites an Arkansas woman who took issue with fireworks, telling the Times, quote, it's hard to tell the difference between guns and fireworks. And here there is always something on the news about a shooting or something, so it makes me nervous. They are also bad for the environment. They release a lot of toxic chemicals. Friends, this is beyond dumb. This is a perfect example of creating news rather than reporting news. Americans don't think the 4th of July is controversial. It's our nation's birthday. But the left-wing publication will seek out indoctrinated oat munchers and create a story out of thin air. And that's exactly what the New York Times did here. The reporter found some Gen Z person on TikTok who fit the storyline and interviewed her as one of those people uneasy about the 4th of July. Here's some of her TikTok comments. 4th of July is coming up and as a controversial holiday, I would just like to remind everyone that it is okay to not celebrate or to take advantage of the festivities and use it to celebrate something else. 
I will probably go to a barbecue because those tend to be hosted by black family or friends. And I see that as a time to come together and celebrate the fact that we are also still here despite America trying to get rid of us when they were trying to gain their independence. Wow. Did you see the caption as she was talking? It read, you don't have to celebrate false independence and white supremacy this July. Again, we have our government-run schools to blame for churning out people like this. But it's the New York Times that created this story for no other reason than to create controversy and bring down America. The company actually wants Americans to feel badly for being American. Well, this American is having no part of it. This is the greatest country in the world, and it is a country worth saving. We have a lot of work to do because as we've been living our lives, as free people do, the left has been working for decades on how to bring it down. However, if we all stick together, perhaps we can celebrate another Independence Day when we can finally shake off the Marxist ideology that is infecting our country for good. All right, next let's talk about waning American patriotism. But first, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on, that way you can follow the show and help us grow. Okay, next as a follow-up, let's talk about patriotism in our country. Because the work of the left through its infiltration and complete control over public education, along with control of media and entertainment, has certainly taken its toll on the attitudes of Americans. The lead segment showed you some specific examples of America bashers and those who don't have any love for our country. But what about Americans in general? New polling that has come out recently has some staggering and alarming results. A recent Gallup poll found just 39% of adults took extreme pride in our country. That is down four points from 43% two years ago. But this trend is anything but new. Look at the chart. Pride in our nation has been on the decline for the last 20 years. And there's an interesting distinction when you look among political parties. Gallup found that 60% of Republicans say they were extremely proud, while just 29% of Democrats did. Americans who are extremely proud of being an American has dropped four points in just two years. And this is a trend that has been going on for the last few decades. It should come as no surprise that Democrats are the big drag on this polling, since they consistently are less patriotic in every single poll. Anyone who has ever done block walking for a political campaign knows that when you come up to a neighborhood or a street or a cul-de-sac and see a group of houses with American flags, they will likely be Republican voters. That's just a fact. Here's more polling. And the Wall Street Journal released an American Pride poll of their own earlier this year with just 38% of Americans saying that patriotism is very important to them. In 1998, that figure stood at 70%. But American pride isn't the only traditional value that's heading out the door these days. That same poll found that 39% of Americans think religion is very important. Now that is down from 62% also from 1998. In that Wall Street Journal polling, we are looking at a span of 25 years. 25 years. That's all it has taken under constant bombardment from the left to take American patriotism down from 70% to 38%. And as you saw, there was a similar drop over the same period of time on the importance of religion. There are four pillars upon which America and any great society are built. Faith, family, freedom, and patriotism. Now, what the left has done is they realize that they just can't come out and attack America all at once and try to destroy the building. No, they will chip away at the foundation, knowing that if they can bring the pillars down, everything will crumble. The left is going after children to destroy the family. The left seeks to censure free speech to destroy our freedom. And they continually bash America and promote division to bring down our patriotism. With attacks on Christian values, we also see their efforts to go after faith. The results of these Marxist efforts are real. We see it all around us. And it's no wonder many Americans are losing faith in the future of our country. Here's a little more polling to drive that point home. And now for the first time, a stunning new Fox News poll shows that a majority of Americans believe the country's best days are behind us. And a Gallup poll found that nearly 70 percent of Americans no longer have confidence in our national government. I believe our best days can still be ahead of us. With the rise of communist China on the world stage, 
America must remain that beacon of hope and freedom for the world. The left wants to tear that down, and it's up to all of us to keep that fire burning. Next, as Americans were celebrating this holiday weekend, Joe and Hunter Biden were possibly celebrating in a different way. It turns out that cocaine was discovered in the West Wing of the White House, and guess who just visited on Friday? That's right, Hunter Biden. A mysterious white powder was discovered in the West Wing on Sunday, prompting a hazardous materials call to the fire department. I wish I was making this up, but it's true. Newsmax can confirm the powder is presumed by the fire department to be cocaine. It was sent to a lab for further analysis. Hunter, I can tell you, was at the White House on Friday, leaving with his father for Camp David. Can you believe this? What is going on at the White House? Hunter Biden shows up for a visit and all of a sudden there's cocaine in the West Wing. This is yet another example that you can add to Biden's shady operations. Author and conservative consultant Craig Shirley recently spoke to Newsmax about the latest revelation. I think this is another major black eye for the White House, you know, Ill illegal drug substances in the White House. It, it, it makes sense, but it's a, it's a terrible thing to happen on July 4th, on our nation's birthday. Shirley was also asked about the public reaction, whether hearing this latest news about the Biden White House will have any impact. Here's Shirley. Look, this is a, a, cr a crime family. The Biden, is, Biden family is a crime family. It's a criminal uh, activity emanating from the White House on a daily basis. So people, some pe a, a portion of the population has become inured to scandal in this White House, but, uh, but a good healthy portion of, of Americans are, are also shocked that this would happen in the White House. It's just sad that the media and Democrats continue to cover for the Biden family, but it's exactly what they did for Hillary Clinton too. And it's one of the reasons that Americans have lost faith in government. People must be held accountable. And what we are seeing from recent investigations and evidence is a family led by Joe Biden that is corrupt, ruthless, and will sell out America to make a buck. Friends, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, today's show's one sheet is available to Patreon supporters using the link in the description. The one sheet gives you the links to all the videos and stories used on today's show so you can dive even deeper into each issue. And with that, our next show will be Monday evening at the usual time. Until then, I'm Bobby Everly. This is a 13 minute news hour. All right, friends, thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button above. Once you do, tell your friends, share it, spread the word about the 13 minute news hour so we can keep growing. And for more great content, check out these videos right here and I'll see you next time.